Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another session of the Network Seminar Series hosted by the Center for Networked Intelligence at the Robert Bosch Center for Cyber Physical Systems, IAC. Today's talk is by Dr. Sayek Ray Chaudhary, and he will be speaking on Shuffle Private Linear Contextual Bandits. Dr. Sayek Ray Chaudhary received BE degree from Jadavpur University, Kolkata in 2012 and ME and PhD degrees from the Indian Institute of Science, Bengaluru in 2015 and 2021, respectively. He is currently working as a postdoctoral researcher at Boston University, USA. His research interests include online learning, reinforcement learning, and differential privacy. Before we move on to the talk, we would like to request the audience to subscribe to our Google group for information on future talks. You can also visit our website for more details. I will be pasting the links in the chat box. Please do check. Finally, we request the audience to keep your microphones on silent for the duration of the talk. And for questions, you may ask Dr. Sayek directly or type them in the chat box and we will moderate it with him. Over to you, Dr. Sayek. Thank you for the nice introduction. And thank you for inviting me uh, to give a talk in, in the seminar series. Uh, and good evening, everyone. So today I'll be talking about uh, Shuffle Private. Uh, uh, Dr. Sai, uh, could you share? Yeah. Okay. Sorry? Uh, could you please share your screen? Uh, yeah, now I it, can see. OK. <clears throat> OK, today I'll be talking about uh, uh, differentially private uh, multi arm bandit problems. This is a joint work with um, Zingyu Chao, who is an assistant professor in Wayne State University. Let me first give a, a brief introduction on the multi arm bandit problem. So, multi arm bandits is a, a decision theoretic framework where an agent learns about an unknown system by querying the system with some actions and in turn receiving some feedback or reward from the system. Say at time one, it queries the system with action one and gets to observe some noisy reward one. Using this data, it queries the system with action two in time two and henceforward gets to see the reward two. And the pro procedure goes like this. Therefore, the agent acts based on the past data and its goal is to maximize the reward received so far. Obviously, the future rewards that the agent will generate is, will depend on the present action the agent is going to take today. And hence, all this data, the action and the reward sequences are, gener are observed sequentially. Since the agent doesn't have any knowledge about the uh, system in advance, it always faces a dilemma whether to explore the system, that means gather more, more and more knowledge about the system, or exploit, that means whether to use the currently gathered knowledge about the system to select its current actions. This is a very standard dilemma in multi and bandit problems which is called exploration versus exploitation. Think about gambling in a casino as an example. You do not know the reward generating process of the casino. So you all, uh, a gambler always faces the dilemma whether to use current knowledge about the casino uh, to get, uh, get reward or to keep pulling different arms in the casino to generate adequate knowledge about the reward generating process. Okay, so there are a lot of examples, a lot of practical examples which you can cast as a multi arm bandit problem. For example, consider uh, recommendation systems, say IMDb or Netflix. There are n movies that can be recommended to a user, and we and where the rating of the movies given by the users are not known by the agents. So which movie the agent should recommend to a user? 
based on the ratings given by previous users. So we can cast this as a multi and bandit problem that each action is a movie to recommend and the reward is a rating given by the user. Similarly, we can think about clinical trials as an, another example. There are n treatments for a given symptom and the agent do, do not know the effect of the treatments beforehand. So he faces this problem, what treatment should, should he allocate to the next patient based on the responses that he observed on previous patients. Here, each action corresponds to one a, a treatment and the reward corresponds to whether the treatment works or not. Similarly, there are other examples like online ad recommendation, so on and so forth. So th all these problems can be caused as a multi and many problem. For the purpose of talk, we'll focus on the clinical trials as our uh, go-to example. Think about a, a medical app where a user logs in with some and puts some of his uh, medical history, some of his uh, information like age, gender, etc. And based on this user's information, that medical app recommends some uh, treatment or some medication to the user. Think about some doctors are also in the system who recommends these um, treatments to the user. So this will be our go-to example for this talk. So without much ado, let me uh, begin the con uh, main content of the talk. First, I will talk about contextual bandit problem through the lens of privacy. The contextual bandit games follows in capital T round sequentially. Think about a server or an agent sitting in a cloud. You can think about a medical app about the uh, cloud server and there's a user uh, which logs into the app. At every round T, the app observes user's context CT which can be user's gender, age, medical history, and so on and so forth. After observing the user's context CT, and based on all the data that the app or the agent has gathered over the past, it now recommends an action AT to the user. Think about a prescribed medicine as an action. Now, after recommending this action, the agent gets to see some reward uh, from user. Think about whether the medicine works or not. So for the purpose of this talk, we'll assume that the reward is a noisy linear function of the agent's context and the prescribed action through a feature map phi, which will assume to be known to the agent a priori. However, the weights of this linear function is unknown and it's a vector in RD and the agent needs to learn these weights so that it can maximize its reward in, a, in, in other way. It can prescribe the medicine which works. Interestingly, uh, this linear reward assumption makes the problem a bit simpler to work on a d-dimensional Euclidean space. However, all the results that I will be showing in this paper will also hold for arbitrary Hilbert, any arbitrary Hilbert space. So finally, after uh, receiving the reward, the agent will update the belief about this unknown uh, vector theta star using all this data that he has gathered in this round, that is the user's context CT the prescribed action AT and the received reward YT. <laughs> the goal of the agent is to maximize its reward. That means maximize the number of patients uh, for which the 
the medication worked in other way we can describe a goal to be minimizing the cumulative regret due to not knowing the unknown vector theta star in advance so this is the expression of uh, cumulative regret over capital t rounds the left hand side is the highest possible reward the agent can gather in capital t rounds but the right hand side is the actual reward that the hidden agent has obtained so it he will try to minimize this gap between two possible rewards and we'll look for algorithm who achieve, which achieves sublinear regret with respect to the number of rounds capital t let me now talk about some privacy issues that can happen in the bandit problem so both context and reward are sensitive information of an user context means the user's age gender medical history everything is uh, sensitive information also whether the uh, treatment worked or not you can also classify this as a sensitive information and the user might not want this information to be sold in the web so he wants some sense of protection from the agent that his information will be private keep kept private or secure and standard bandit algorithms which do not care about privacy could reveal this information so let me give an illustrative example how an an information of an patient can be revealed consider bob as a patient who has a diabetes and the health app often prescribe this black medicine to him now think about alice is a new user to the app and he is extremely happy with a, a new diabetes treatment green okay so now alice logs into the system the system gets alice's data which is uh, the alice's context her action and the new diabetes treatment green which is which has been prescribed to him to her and how whether it whether it is working or not so after alice logs in bob receives a new recommendation that is the same green medicine okay now if bob knows that alice is the most recent user then based on the new recommendation that he gets he will figure out that probably alice might also have diabetes so his belief that alice has diabetes increases after he has been recommended a new medicine now instead of bob think about a adversary who who is malicious in nature logs into the system and gets this new recommendation so he gets to know alice's medical history or he gets to uh, you know infer alice's medical history through this information and that is and that surely alice uh, doesn't want so in this way privacy can be revealed a private information can be revealed in the app so how can the agent guarantee privacy for users data in this case alice's data a, a technology to ensure uh, this is called differential privacy let me introduce a brief uh, this, uh, no, uh, definition of differential privacy a mechanism you can think about an algorithm uh, created by an agent m gives excellent differential privacy if if for all pairs of data sets d and d prime which differs only in the data of one user that means think about whether alice is present in the data set or not and for all events s the following uh, relation holds the probability of the output of the mechanism 
on the trained on the data set D belongs to the set S is upper bounded by e to the power epsilon times the probability of output of the mechanism trained on the dif different data set D prime lies in the same set S. I will explain how this definition ensures privacy. Now see that, note that uh, the probability here is on the randomness introduced by the mechanism M. So it has nothing to do with the randomness of the reward generating process. It is only the randomness, possible randomness incorporated in the mechanism. Okay. And epsilon is the loss of privacy that we can loss of privacy that we can take. Now, the definition implies that if Bob is unlikely to be prescribed the green medicine, if Alice is not there, then it is still unlikely if she is. So, by seeing the new green medicine prescribed to him, Bob cannot infer whether Alice is present in the system or not. In this way, Alice's uh, personal uh, data is protected. So the de definition essentially tells that the output of the randomized algorithm that the agent builds is almost similar whether a single person or single data has been present in the database or not. So that you cannot infer the presence of that data in the database and the data is protected. Okay, so one can also, you know, relax this definition a bit by incorporating a failure probability that we call approximate differential privacy or epsilon delta differential privacy. Here delta is the probability in which this above privacy guarantee fails to hold. You can think about delta is a very small, small number, very small number close to zero. However, this gives a relaxed notion of privacy. There are good uh, properties and properties of differential privacy. One of them is the differential privacy is future proof. That means if, if we can ensure a mechanism or an algorithm is differentially private, then whatever post-processing we do on top of that algorithm is also different, will also be differential private. Another property is uh, composition. That means if we have two mechanisms or two algorithms which are differential private, and we define a new algorithm by composing these two algorithms, then the composite mechanism will also be differentially private with the privacy loss losses, that is epsilon and delta, at adding up. These two are very key properties of differential privacy. There are also some advanced properties, but let's not talk about this now. So how uh, differentially, what is a differentially private protocol in linear contextual bandit looks like? So we'll con first consider the central model of differentially private protection. By central model, I mean that the central server or the agent is trusted by the users. Okay, so in this figure, at th time, Alice logs in with her data through her context CT and action recommended to her AT and her reward YT. And based on Alice's data, the agent computes or updates the belief about the model and prescribe near prescribed data to Bob, a uh, prescribed uh, treatment to Bob at time t plus one. This is the learning setup. So how differential, pri differential privacy works in this setup? The idea is to add well-tuned noise to obscure all the user's data. The central server is trusted and when, when it performs an update, 
update of the model. That means it performs some computation or it analyzes the data that it, it has been received so far in small t number of rounds that are that means the data of t users context c, c i i varies from one to t actions a i i varies from one to t and rewards y i i varies from one to t it takes all the users data and add a suitable amount of gaussian noise to update the model think about a as a black box function uh, currently we won't uh, delve into into the details of the function as of now think about it it as a black box function which takes all the users data and a gaussian distribution with some uh, variance uh, with mean zero and variance as its input and as as its output it gives a estimate of the parameter unknown parameter theta star that we have described before. okay so the idea is to tune the noise of the gaussian distribution sigma square such that we can guarantee differential privacy or the probability of receiving the green medicine uh, by bob is controlled it turns out if we can add gaussian noise with variance sigma square which is order of log of 1 by delta divided by epsilon square then we can achieve epsilon delta differential privacy for the algorithm and smaller the epsilon and delta is that means smaller the privacy loss is that which implies the privacy protection is strong however this also implies the noise added has larger variance and intuitively you can think of think of this as since the noise noise is large so the estimate or the model update will be away from the true will be a bit away from the true model theta star and so the performance guarantee will get hampered and it turns out that this holds there is an algorithm proposed by sharif and shape in 2018 which takes a particular form of this analyzing function or the agent function a and use this uh, particular uh, use this black box function a to recommend the actions or the medication that is the medication treatment to different users and that algorithm achieves order of square root t regret however the dependence on the privacy parameters are as follows it is order of 1 by square root epsilon with respect to the uh, privacy log parameter epsilon also it is order of log of log to the power 1 by 4 of 1 by delta with respect to the failure probability delta so if epsilon and delta is small which gives stronger privacy the regret will blow up However, this is not surprising stronger privacy means in injecting higher noise which will affect the performance so the result states that we get order of square root t by square root epsilon regret ignore the delta dependence uh, as of now regret under epsilon delta uh, dp guarantee so we call it central dp because we assume that the central server or the app is trusted which is which sits on a you, you can think about the central server sits on a cloud of a company okay we can talk about another source of privacy risk where uh, as before the both context and your sensitive information however the agents do not trust the central server which sits in the cloud so he all the no, sorry not the agent the users do not trust the central server so all the users always faces this question what if the central server is not trustworthy so the question that can arise there in their mind is will the um, server follow the right privacy mechanism so that my information gets protected or will it use my data for other use cases or not whether will it sell my data through some dark web or not 
even if the central server is trustworthy what will happen if it is attacked by an adversary how trust how trustworthy is it okay hence the users may not be willing to share their raw data to the central server not that the raw data of the users are their context city via this feature map tree or which is a which is a map from the context and actions to a d dimensional euclidean space and also the reward which is a real value number the users may not be willing to share this data to the server and hence what they will do they will try to protect this data themselves so how to formalize this in the contextual bandit scenario this model of privacy that we call is local model that means each user protects their data locally before sending it to the server okay and local model of privacy always implies central model of privacy because if the user makes their data private by themselves then and then when it reaches to the central server it is always private and by the post processing property of dp it holds okay so here are these two users and there is a central server which is not trusted each user applies some local randomizing mechanism you can think about a local gaussian mechanism or add some gaussian noise mean zero gaussian noise with some properly tuned variant sigma sigma square to its raw data and after that it sends this um, uh, randomized data to the server similar to previously we the users add gaussian noise with variance sigma square which is order of 1 by epsilon square ignore the delta dependence as of now and obviously smaller epsilon and delta is stronger privacy but however noise is higher and it will all it will get a higher regret and it turns out that zing et al in in 2020 showed that under this local model of privacy a bandit algorithm will get order of t to the power 3 by 4 regret under this local model of privacy so see the regret is now blown up from t to the power from square root t in the central model to t to the power 3 by 4 in the local model okay so here is a uh, short summary so far in the central model there is a trusted server all the agents trust their data with the server and send the data uh, to the server it takes all the data of the agent of the uh, sorry users and adds some uh, properly tuned gaussian noise to get an bandit algorithm and this algorithm gets order of square root t by square root epsilon regret under epsilon data delta dp guarantee however in the local model agent doesn't um uh, uh, trust the uh, server and use their own randomization to their own data and after that it only sends it to the server server takes this data and build their uh, bandit algorithm with this uh, randomized data and it the algorithm gets order of t to the power 3 by 4 regret so basically what happens in the local model there are capital t users so there are capital t no gaussian noise independent gaussian noise has been added however in the central model this black box function a act, actually app, injects locked the amount of noise this is the reason where in the central model we get square root t regret however in the local model we get a blow up of regret in the form of t to the power 3 by 4 so natural question arises is can one achieve a finer trade off between privacy and regret in other words can we get close to the square root t regret bound even if we do not trust the central server in this work we will try we answer this question affirmatively well partially affirmatively that means we reduce uh, the regret scaling from t2 to the 3 by 4 to t2 to the 3 by 5 but we are not quite able to achieve square root t regret frontier 
obviously we do not assume any trusted server so around this point uh, let me try to uh, introduce a notion of privacy which is called shuffle protocol so there are a couple of uh, there are n number of users and there is an uh, app which is a central server it's, it is not trusted in the shuffle model of privacy there is a shuffler sits in between the users and the central server you can think about the shuffling function is 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 simple is is a simple operation which takes all the users data and just randomly permutes this data okay so each user applies some local randomizer to his uh, to his or her data okay and the data is the context and the reward so that the output of the local randomizer is epsilon not delta not private this is local gap local privacy guarantee the uh, the local randomizer are ensures now the data reaches the server uh, the shuffler the shuffler shuffles it or randomly permutes it and make sure the output is epsilon delta private then even if the central server a is not trusted since the input all the input data to the to the server is already epsilon delta private the output of a will also be epsilon delta private due to post processing property of db not only that this additional randomness introduced by this uniform permutation operation by the shuffler amplifies the level of privacy that means epsilon is much much smaller than the local level of privacy epsilon not similarly delta is much much smaller than local privacy level delta not so privacy loss which is epsilon or delta reduces drastically after this shuffling and it obviously it depends on the number of data points or the number of users let me now give a formal definition of shuffle uh, differential privacy to consider a shuffle protocol p which is given by three components r is a local randomizer s is a shuffler and a is an analyzer which sits on the uh, not trusted central server given n user which data d1 to dn the output of the shufflers is s compose r of d1 to r of dn where r is a local randomizer applied to each user's data so this is a output of the shuffler we call the shuffle protocol p satisfies shuffle dp epsilon delta shuffle dp if the output of the shuffler is epsilon delta dp so take the output of the shuffler and ensure that it satisfies epsilon delta dp guarantee then by post processing property of dp uh, the entire shuffle protocol given by r s and a will also be differentially private now note that in bandits we do not have this bunch of n users in advance the data or the users come sequentially to the system so natural way to apply this definition is to divide the users into different batches say batches of some n users and run a shuffle protocol or an independent shuffle protocol for each batch okay and if all the users are unique that means given our time window capital t if no users return to the app then it suffices to show each proto each shuffle protocol for each batch is epsilon delta dp to ensure the entire algorithm entire protocol is epsilon delta dp and this happens due to the parallel composition property of dp so for now we will i will assume the users are unique that means user doesn't return however the guarantee that will show can be extended when users return with a slightly worse guarantee but i will not focus on, on that in this talk as of now for now just assume all the users are unique okay so let me give a brief introduction of our algorithm here is an illustration of our algorithm which we we'll call shuffle private linear contextual bandits so we divide all the users in uh, batches so there is a first batch 
couple of users are there. Each user have their own uh, randomized mechanism R. Okay, and there is a shuffler and there is an analyzer which is in the central server and it is not trusted. Each user has some belief in the each user's local app. Think about uh, each user have their app installed in their mobile. It has some uh, belief about the uh, model parameter theta star. So that model gives or recommends some action, uh, some treatment to the user. User sends that uh, data through the randomizer and to the shuffler. The second user does the same. The third user does also the same, just sending their data to the randomizer. The data gets shuffled, passed to the analyzer. The analyzer takes all this batch of user data, use this to update the model and send it to the user's personal apps. Now, next batch of in the next batch of user, this updated model is used to recommend actions and the process goes on. It, the user sends this to the randomizer and it gets shuffled and goes to the analyzer. Okay, this is a high level illustration of the algorithm, privacy, privacy protection algorithm. So here is a template of the algorithm that we will follow. The algorithm takes as input the privacy budget, the privacy loss that we are willing to suffer, epsilon and delta, and the batch size B. For each user T in a batch, the in-device app of each user, it observes user's context CT, prescribes the action via UCB rule. UCB means upper confidence bound, which is a popular algorithm in multi bandits. This is the rule uh, written in the green, uh, the blue equation. The rule states that uh, you, you always uh, recommend the action which maximizes some optimistic version of the estimated user's reward. The left hand side, uh, the first term is estimate of user's reward, where you can think about theta hat is the estimate of the unknown parameter theta star. The second term is, is quantifies the uncertainty around the estimate. Because you do not know the estimate, you, uh, you do not know the true parameter, you estimate it and and there is always an uncertainty whether how close it is to the true estimate theta star. So the second term characterizes this uncertainty where capital V is a positive definite matrix which is uh, which governs this uncertainty. And beta is a term which is a parameter controlling which controls exploration versus exploitation trade-off in uh, this batch. Whether, because you do not know the system in advance, so you need to uh, tune beta in such a way so that your exploration and exploitation is controlled. So after it prescribes this action AT, it gets to see the reward YT, which is generated from theta star. In the second step, the local randomizer R it adds noise to user data. We divide the data in two parts. It's a, a small dt is a vector, which is co context a feature vector times the reward, which is times the reward, which is a real. So small dt is a vector and capital DT is a rank one matrix given by the feature vectors. The local randomizer adds this noise to the user's data. Now, and when a batch ends, the shuffler randomly permutes all the noisy data. That means permutes all the noisy vectors and all the noisy matrices. Then the analyzer computes some statistics for the batch using the shuffle noisy data. Here, small u tilde is a vector which passed to the analyzing function A and capital V tilde is a matrix which passed through the analyzing function A. So now, take, now it takes this uh, batch statistics u tilde and v tilde and update to the previously computed statistics for from previous batches. That means an overall statistics is now u, which is previous u plus u tilde and capital V, which is previous V plus V tilde. So using this uh, overall statistics, it now computes an estimate of the parameter theta hat, which is V inverse u. Now send this new model, which is theta hat, the estimate and V, the uncertainty matrix to 
in device apps. That means to the next batch of users, and then it starts a new batch. So this is a high level idea of the uh, algorithm. Let me now specify how the randomized functions are analyzing function A and shuffle function S looks like. So we'll consider two protocols. The first protocol is we'll amplify the shuff, uh, privacy guarantee in shuffle protocol via uh, via the LDP via the local privacy guarantees. Here is a amplification protocol of Gaussian mechanism. So here is the our shuffle protocol user side randomizer. There is a shuffler and there are analyzer. There is an uh, analyzer which is not trusted. Each local randomizer is a Gaussian mechanism that I have talked before. Here is an user's data given by features and the reward. We get a vector and get a rank one matrix from the data. Apply a, a randomizer R to the vector and to the matrix. So each entry of the ve uh, vector noise is IID Gaussian with uh, some param variance parameter sigma naught squared. Each upper triangular entry of the matrix noise is also IID Gaussian. And for the lower triangular entries, we just copy it from the upper triangular entries. So it's, you can think about a random symmetry matrix. This is the randomizer function. Shuffler is just a un, uh, uniform permutation of all the data, all the randomized data that it has received. And analyzer is simple aggregation of noisy shuffle data. That means U tilde, that is the batch statistics, is computed by adding all the shuffle noisy data, noisy vectors, and V tilde is computed by adding all the shuffle noisy matrices. Okay, this is the uh, complete shuffle protocol via privacy amplification, local privacy amplification. So how much guarantee that we get? Here is, a performance, is our performance mouse. Fix a batch size B. Some privacy budget delta is less than one. Epsilon is less than one by square root of the batch size. Add, assume the noise in the local Gaussian mechanism that is in local mechanism R is sigma naught is the standard division of the Gaussian uh, distribution is order of one by epsilon times square root B. Then we can show that our complete shuffle protocol satisfies epsilon delta dP. Further, by setting batch size B to the power is order of T to the power three by five, we can guarantee order of T to the power three by five divided by square root epsilon regret with high probability. There are some good points about this uh, guarantee bound. Note that this local Gaussian mechanism gives uh, local privacy with epsilon not, with privacy loss epsilon naught, which is epsilon times square root B. However, using the shuffler, we amplify the level of privacy to epsilon. Remind, I just remind you that smaller the epsilon, higher the privacy level. Some good points about this regret bound that we achieve a better regret compared to order of T to the power three by four in the local model. So we improve from T to the three by four to T to the three by five, still not requiring a, a trusted server access. And the algorithm is easy to implement. It requires minimal modification of LDP, existing LDP algorithm. Just add a shuffler, make a batch schedule. However, the privacy guarantee holds here only for small epsilon. See, epsilon is one by square root of B. So epsilon is much, much smaller than one. So in practice, if you are okay with taking, okay with working with a privacy level, epsilon equal to 10, then you cannot apply this guarantee because this guarantee holds only for epsilon less, less than one. Also, we add continuous uh, Gaussian noise, which is difficult to implement on finite precision computers, obviously. And it has also been shown that adding comp uh, continuous noise in finite computers uh, can lead to privacy leakage. So to overcome this, we, we use also there is a we need to communicate real numbers that is vectors and matrices, which all can also be uh, communication heavy. So to overcome all these difficulties, we now talk about another mechanism, which is SDP by a vector sum. So let me now give a brief introduction: what a vector sum, what a what a private sum protocol is. 
consider the following problems given n real numbers within 0 to 1 release their private sum with error order of 1 by epsilon where epsilon is your privacy loss without access to a trusted server so this is the uh, basic problem we'll consider and we'll build on that a shuffle protocol for this problem has been proposed by Chew et al in 2021 and this has been achieved by a randomizer which uses fixed point encoding randomized routing and add discrete binomial noise this is the randomizer protocol the shuffler is simple randomly permute a bunch of bits an analyzer is aggregate all the bits with simple some debiasing operation i will talk about this up in detail the good point is only bit combination is need, communication is needed we add discrete noise binomial noise is a discrete noise and the privacy guarantee holds for epsilon less than 15 so a huge a large range of uh, privacy level it holds okay let me now give a brief uh, illustration of the uh, shuffle private sum mechanism which we denote by p scalar given by randomizer r shuffler f and analyzer a there are n data points x1 to xn given between 0 to 1 so and let me now illustrate how this uh, randomizer function looks looks like okay so it takes the data point say 0 0.98 do fixed point encoding with g equal to 10 so we see set the parameter g equal to 10 call compute this x bar which is floor of x times g so this gives x bar equal to 9 then it does randomized routing that means it generates a iid uh, independent bernoulli noise and add it to x bar say the noise is 1 and so your x x hat is 10 this is randomized rounding. In the next step, it adds some binomial noise gamma 2 with uh, 2 x hat. Uh, binomial noise is generated with the parameters b and p that we will set accordingly. Say binomial noise is 5 and your x hat was 10, so we get 15. And the way you set this g and b parameters, you get you we, we generate g plus b amount of bits. Okay, so G is 10 and B is 5, so 15 bit. First, X hat plus gamma 2, which is, sorry, G and B are some uh, parameter set, and X hat plus gamma 2 is 15, bits are 1, and all the rest are 0. We take all these bits, so this number, this uh, uh, real number 0 0.98 has been converted to bits, this uh, collection of bits, and take uh, send it to the shuffler. Similarly, all the N numbers are converted and send it to the shuffler. The shuffler takes all the bits, uniformly permutes it, and say get this bit string, which is n times g plus b shuffle bits. Now I'll talk about the analyzing function. The analyzing function takes all these bits and just sum all the bits together. Okay, and then it simply debiases uh, the sum. Okay, just to make sure the estimate z of the sum is uh, unbiased the questions that we will face is how close this sum is and whether the output of the shuffler is private or not okay and it turns out uh, if you set g as on the order of square root of the data point b to in this way there are certain parameter choices g b and p then this shuffle mechanism satisfies epsilon delta differential privacy and the estimate z is unbiased with variance order of 1 by epsilon square and the guarantee holds by amplification of binomial noise that has been added in the randomizer and let me not go into the details is uh, you can think about each the binomial noise make sure each data is epsilon times square root and locally private and hence and by amplification of shuffle model the sum is epsilon shuffle private so the amplification of uh, privacy is being achieved by the binomial noise we can extend this to sum of n norm bounded vectors that we call pvec it is it's nothing but just apply p scalar entry wise to all the to the vectors similarly to the matrices 
you can flatten a matrix to a vector and just entry wise apply p scalar so p scalar that i have described and use this in our uh, setting where the data is vector and matrices to get our mechanism pvec so here uh, and you can also show that pvec is shuffle differential privacy with and the estimated unbiased with bounded variance so here is our protocol vector sum protocol in linear contextual bandits uh, remind you that uh, there are uh, users in batches and each user have some local randomizer r there is shuffler and there is analyzer which is not trusted okay the local random randomizer is simple take the user's data which are vectors and matrices and apply rvec to the vectors and matrices and rvec is just the vectorized version of the randomizer fixed point encoding and binomial noise randomizer that i just talked add all this all add that mechanism entry wise to the vectors and matrices and analyzer is simple the analyzing function the show the sum of all the bits and the debiasing operation that i just mentioned and apply this to entry wise to uh, vectors and matrices okay we just take uh, uh, the p scalar as a black box and apply this to uh, our matrices and matrix uh, vectors to get our complete shuffle protocol and obviously shuffler is just randomly uh, permuting all the bits so here is a performance guarantee of this protocol fix a batch size b privacy budget is less than 15 and delta less than half and there are exist some parameter choices so that our algorithm satisfies epsilon delta differential privacy on also by setting b the batch size in a proper amount we, we guarantee t to the 3 by 5 break rate similar to previous our previous model of sdp via uh, local privacy amplification in this model also we get order of t to the 3 by 4 degree which is better than the local model t to the 3 by 5 degree which is better than the local model the privacy holds for a for epsilon less than 50 and why is 15 is a good number because in uh, in uh, industry research apple has shown that in most practical applications if selling less than 10 uh, privacy loss you can you can you know you can accommodate a privacy loss up to 10 so our guarantee co covers that range of privacy and obviously we add discrete binomial noise and so it can be implemented in finite position computers and we are communicating only the bits we convert a real number to bits and and send to the shuffler and the shuffler send the bits to the analyzer so we are communicating only the bits so these are good points of this algorithm however the issue is still we still have gap compared to the central model degree. we cannot achieve or cannot match square root t degree we do not know whether what is the optimal scaling is let me now show some simulation results we compare the regret achieved by our shuffle model under this both protocols like with privacy amplification and with vector sum mechanism we compare this with the regret achieved by central model that i have described before which gets square root t regret versus local model which is get t to the 3 by 4 regret and obviously our shuffle model gets t to the 3 by 5 regret now see that our algorithm with both protocols both the shuffle protocols achieve regret that lies perfectly in between the central regret which is square root t and the local regret which is t to the 3 by 4 so our uh, lines are uh, red line and the green line these are two shuffle protocols red is amplification and green is vector sum this lies between the cyan line which is the local regret and blue line which is the central regret so the experimental results are, you know sati you know matches the theoretical findings also and black line is the baseline where there is no privacy required you just run a simple vanilla linear bandit algorithm which obviously has a lesser regret because there are no noise there but we do not know how far we can push this red and green line to the blue line so that means can we get closer to the blue line or can we get closer to square root t regret that we do not know yet or what is the lower bound so to this end let me pose some open questions so can we close this regret gap from t to the 3 by t to 3 by 5 to square root t right can we improve this bound 
improve the bound of our a shuffle model or can we design a new shuffle algorithm which improves this bound or in other words what is the lower bound in the in the local model is order of t to the 3 by 4 tight that we also do not know because so this is a statistical question that that is remain in this work there are some uh, conceptual pri pri conceptual questions also so remind that we achieved the uh, dp guarantee with a failure probability of delta that means there is a non-zero probability delta in which the dp guarantee of our algorithm can fail and that might leads to some catastrophic privacy failures okay however small it is be but it's a non-zero number so can we achieve pure dp that means delta equal to zero there is no that means the privacy guarantee holds with probability one and we we believe that to achieve this we need to uh, derive a concentration bound on the spectral norm of a random matrix with sub exponential entries i remind you that here we consider only gaussian norms that means sub that means the random matrix with gaussian entries and we can apply standard results from bershenin's book to achieve our uh, concentration bound but we do not know if similar kind of thing exists in sub for sub exponential random variables also if that that we can achieve then we can add laplace noise which is sub exponential and we can get pure dp guarantee there is also algorithmic question here we fix the batch size b can we change the batch size based on the data received or can we change the batch size adaptively so the standard determinant or volume based arguments uh, fails here uh, because of the uh, noise introduced due to privacy so the question is can you uh, can we derive a private determinant trick okay so i should stop here because i think it's time however uh, there are some uh, a backup slides i have written which give some idea how we prove our bound so this is in all this uh, privacy mechanism that i have talked that piece that is scalar sum or this ldp mechanism this has been developed for estimation problems statistical estimation problems and in those literature they only care about uh, giving an unbiased estimate of the unknown parameter unknown uh, quantity and make sure the variance of the estimate is bounded however we are con we are facing a learning problem when we need to choose an action at every round we need to learn the parameter theta star we need to choose an action so that exploration and exploitation is balanced so and our regret is controlled so this introduces some additional uh, challenges just as like some concentration inequality we need to develop to make a, a properly tuned upper confidence envelopes i will not go to the details so the the takeaway is the regret is we can show if the noise added by the final uh, shuffle protocol is independent sub gaussian the regret is given by this equation where d square root t is the non private regret and d times b is the cost of batch update and the last term is the cost of privacy which is square root of sigma times square root of t and we can use this bound and in under different protocols so for in ldp amplification sigma square is t by epsilon square b we can show that the total noise is this and we can get our final bound similarly for vector sum so this is an high level sketch of the proof which differs from the standard estimation problems okay uh, with this let me uh, uh, end my talk here please feel free to ask any questions uh, here are the references that we have used in this talk and the code is in on the on github the paper is in our, on archive and it is to be uh, presented in international conference in machine learning uh, which is happening in few days Thank you. You need to unlock your okay. iPhone first. Okay. Any Thank questions? you, Dr. Sayek, for an informative talk. We can take a few questions now. One question. Uh, this uh, uh, differential privacy if the adversary is able to guess or uh, get access to one of the 
multiple uh, like uh, the context variables uh, it, it does the uh, privacy get compromised there in sense the yes. social engineering attacks and how do you yes. protect privacy will get, against that yes. yeah privacy will get compromised okay if one data is compromised right yeah one of uh, the multiple variables in the context okay so okay so there are multiple variables and you are talking about one of the variable is compromised right yeah okay yeah yes yeah it's okay so then it won't be uh, private right but how will uh, the adversary get uh, access right so in local model we protect all the variables together so in local model there is no option for the adversary to get this information in central model also we protect all the information together so uh, the results presented here assumes that uh, there is no attacking mechanism which can breach the central model and the local model however in practice there might be some attacking mechanism which can breach that probably in some coordinate of the vector or some coordinate of the matrix then all the guarantees will fail we cannot achieve anything and probably we need to now develop some other algorithms which you know treat it put weightage on certain features certain feature is might be more sensitive to other features and it can put some weightage to certain feature and try to see we can get at least some bound which will obviously be worse than what we get and we can achieve uh, some kind of sublinear bound or not yeah i do not know any such work which tackles this kind of uh, in at least in bandits and in supervised learning i do not know any kind of work which tackles this partial attacks uh, is this uh, answer your question yes thank you any other question yeah i have a question so uh, we talked about the central model and the local model okay and uh, so uh, a model in between them uh, in which you introduced a shuffler and you said that with the shuffler the main server that is still in the local model right with the shuffler we do not assume any trustness of this main server right we do not assume uh, trustness with the main server but what about the yeah. shuffler so if the shuffler is yeah. malicious no it's it's a good question yeah we assume the shuffler is not malicious shuffler is trusted and so, uh, just uh, just to add a point and in industry has implemented like google and apple have shown that you can use some cryptographic uh, techniques to build a to you know to build a trusted shuffling function so this is the motivation behind considering a trusted shuffler i see you, know, you can proceed your what what you are talking about yeah no it, it doesn't answer your question yeah i get it thank you if there are no more questions let's end the session uh, once again let's thank dr saik uh, as discussed before we would like to remind the audience to subscribe to our google groups which is the mailing list for information on future talks you can also visit our website for more details the links have already been pasted in the chat box the link to the recorded video will also be posted on the web page thank you and have a great evening